This is One on One. We are honored in public television to have Mary Lynn Henry, the author of How to Be a Working Actor. And who, you have so many other credits, I'm not even gonna go through them here. Uh, when did you know that you loved acting? I think I was five. How did you know you loved I acting? I think because there is something in children that lets them be very happy or inspires them to entertain their parents. So I was kind of an extroverted child. I think, though, it wasn't till I was 10 that I was serious. And that was because the nun in fifth grade cast me as the part of woman one in a sketch about Our Lady of Fatima. That'll do it. And there was no going back. <laughs> no. OK, all right, ready? let's get right into it. The three best tips for how to be a working actor. I think the first thing I'm going to start with is really being honest, being earnest, that this is a lifetime occupation, not a part-time hobby. So you put your whole self into the process, if this is what you want, of preparing for this event. And that doesn't mean getting off a bus at Port Authority. That means training. Mm. That means having experience. A lot of actors, I will say, when did you decide to become an actor and why? And usually it's because their mother took them to see Annie <laughs> or some other great musical. Right. And they knew they had to get up on that stage. That's the urge to perform, to entertain, to love it. Um, and, and that's the first thing I would say. You have to have that. You've got to have it. And then, Please don't let expectations get in the way of your goal. A lot of people get out of training schools, conservatories, drama programs, and they think, OK, now I've trained. I have a degree. I should be getting a job. I should be. Exactly. I'm entitled. Wrong. No one's entitled to a job in this business because you have to earn it. And so it may take a few years, a few months. It's, there's no time limit on mm. this career. A lot of people try to put a time. If I don't make it in five years, I'm out of here. Wrong thinking. Turn it around. See what you can do in the meantime while you're not getting an audition every day to work creatively for yourself because you're your own business person. Say that part again. You're your own business person. You're your own business person. This is your business. Time out. Someone says, I have an agent. That agent is supposed to be getting me these gigs. Yeah, right. It's not my job to be promoting myself. Let me put it this way. The agent gets 10%. The actor works 90% to get that agent 10%. <laughs> In fact, it's 110%. You I have hear to you. go beyond the agent. Agents work for you as long as you're making it, as long as the auditions are saying, OK, he's got callbacks, he's got a, a third callback for a Broadway show, he's got a role on an episodic television program, so he's hot. But sometimes the heat stops. Mm. And then what do you do then? Agents don't have to take you for life. It's usually in a contract situation, 90 days trial period. Right. So. It's interesting, because I've always had the same philosophy. You are your own best promoter. And people you say, oh, you're a self-promoter. I'm thinking, really? That's a criticism? That's never a criticism. As I said, and I tell this to the students when I do seminars, I've done seminars for years, it's in the book. In order to survive in this business, you have to promote yourself. Mm -hmm. Most com I'm sorry for interrupting, no. which is, I'm sure, a bad thing. Um, most common mistakes people make? Doing nothing. What does that mean? Well, doing nothing means you're not doing anything towards getting a job in the business. So a lot of people, and this is unfortunately what's happening today in the industry, will go to an actor's equity open call at 3 a.m. in the morning. They'll start the line. The call doesn't start until at least 9 a.m. So already they've invested their whole day practically in waiting to get a number to be seen by a casting director for whatever the parts are available in that play. Mm. A lot of people cannot do that. They give up, they go home, they make breakfast. What's important here is that you never lose sight of your focus. Focus is key and discipline. Focus, discipline, 
progress, being smart about yourself as a business person. And for years, there's been this horrible thing going on with actors. I'm an artist. I'm not a businessman. You have to be both. As if they're tainted by being a business person. Oh, business has, a, has kind of a very serious left brain connotation. Mm. It goes against the grain of the creative artist. But how would you ever sell a painting unless you got it down on the street? <laughs> Let me ask you, any difference for men and women? Being a working, working actor? Well, here's the problem, and this is why uh, I'm a member of the, the League of Professional Theater Women, which is trying to get more opportunities for women in theater in all fields of theater, from designers to directors to actors and so forth. And we find that there is not complete gender parity here, that a lot of the plays are male-centric. Right. So there are fewer women's roles. There are fewer women directors who are directing plays, although they're, they're, the numbers are rising, we're happy to say. And so that, for the most part, we see on series and in film a majority of masculinity involved, and maybe one girl who's the lead. And that's been going on for a long time. Getting any better? I think it is. I think I see signs of improvement here. And as long as there are women writers out there to write more roles for women because they have the connection immediately and more males who will give more chances to women, we might have a win-win by 2020 because we're, <laughs> we're going 50-50 in 2020. That's one of our advocacy objectives. Yeah, a few seconds left. You love what you do. I love what I do, and I love theater history, which is why I'm a theater historian, and I bring that. And in the future, I hope to write a book called Career Intelligence for the Actor. When you do that, will you come back? I definitely will. The name of the book is How to Be a Working Actor, written by Mary Lynn Henry and your co-author, Lynn Rogers. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. That was wonderful. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by NJIT, United Water, Meridian Health, Cone Resnick, Fedway Associates, the Fidelco Group, and by New Jersey Sharing Network. Promotional support provided by NJ.com. Small news, big news, true Jersey. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.